I'm a Namaste guys, Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this Monday evening here in Denver, Colorado. I think it's about six o'clock. Uh, way off. It's actually seven fifteen. <laughs> seven fifteen PM Mountain Time here in Denver, Colorado. Just finished healings for the day. Gonna be taking a salt bath, getting to bed early. So I can get on a, so I can leave my house at 5 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning to catch a flight to San Diego for the dun 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 dun, dun the annual Arhatic Yoga Retreat with Master Stephen Co. Um, tomorrow is going to be one class, the um, Inner Teachings of Christianity Revealed, which is a great class, great opportunity to review it. Devanya, Namaste, and then this coming weekend, all day Friday, all day Saturday, and all day Sunday will be the um, annual Arhatic Yoga Retreat. Yana, Atma Namaste. And if any of you, Karina, Atma Namaste, if any of you are in the Long Beach area, no pun intended, ha, 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 if any of you are in the Long Beach area, San Diego area, Southern LA area, let me know. I'm going to be in, I'm going to have uh, two free days, Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, Wednesday. Pretty much Wednesday and Thursday. I'll have two free days in that area. I'm doing an Airbnb uh, right by Long Beach, like a walking distance from the beach. So if uh, you're in the area and you want to mix it up, want to get a cup of coffee, get a smoothie, go for a walk on the beach, have an interesting conversation, even get healing, definitely let me know. Kashmir, Atma Namaste, welcome. And my question to you for tonight on today's live stream, before I take a salt bath and continue to cleanse and purify up into the day of the event, the retreat, is who is the boss in your life? Now, for the American viewers of this live stream, you'll remember that show, that sitcom with Tony Danza from the 1980s called Who's the Boss, where basically it was him, his daughter, uh, moved into a wealthy suburb where he was like the nanny of uh, this successful executive woman's family and all the weird dynamics that happened with that. But it's a, a, a really well-known movie or well-known sitcom from the, com uh, from the 80s. It was a comedy. I would say I'm the boss in my life because I do the final saying when it comes to taking decisions. Ah, I like that. Well said. Very, very well said. A lot of people, if you were to ask the question, who is the boss of your life, there's many different ways that you could answer it. You could answer it of, well, I'm, my spouse is the boss of me. My children are the boss of me. My boss at work is the boss of me. My parents are the boss of me. Society at large is the boss of me. My subconscious programming is the boss of me. But when I ask the question, who is the boss of you? I'm asking from the highest level of truth that we can experience on a individual soul level, regarding it as the higher soul or regarding it as the I am. So in one of Master Cho Kuksui's books, my teacher, the modern founder of Pranic Healing and Arhatic Yoga, he talks about Compassionate Objectivity. This is one of the sutra books. And in this book, he talks about the major virtues that we work on in pranic healing and arhatic yoga that applies to everybody on the planet, not just people who are pranic healers or arhatic yogis. And it's about character building, which is the foundation of your life. Good character, good life. Bad character, not so good life. And the first sutra, I'm sorry, the second sutra that starts off the entire book says, character is the manifestation of the degree of soul contact. When you are out of balance, the connection between you and your higher soul becomes minimal. Weak character reflects the weakness of the soul. Adriana, my namaste. Weak character reflects the weakness of the soul. When soul connection is not strong, the chakras, rather than the soul, control the lower bodies. Ask, who is the boss, the soul 
or the chakras. It's so profound. Angie, Atma Namaste. It's so profound. This one sutra that pretty much starts off the entire book. Character is the manifestation of the degree of soul contact. So what does that mean? So we have a spiritual connection, right? We have a physical body, but we're also connected spiritually to our spiritual body. That spiritual body is where all the energy comes from. It comes from God, through the great ones, through our spiritual teacher, through our higher self, and into our vehicles. Our mental body, or mental vehicle, our emotional body, our emotional vehicle, our physical body, or physical vehicle. So, each of these bodies have its own level of consciousness. So when you go to sleep, do you die? No. Your body still keeps breathing, still keeps pumping blood, still keeps dividing cells, because your body has its own level of consciousness from the energy it receives through the soul. Right? Can you feel feelings? Claudine, I'm going to say, can you feel feelings that you didn't necessarily generate yourself? Yes. It's called your emotional body. And your emotional body is designed to move. Right? It's designed to feel highs and feel lows. Right? Unless we control it, your emotional body will just do what it's doing. Miss the name of the book. The compassionate objectivity of the golden lotus sutra books compassionate objectivity Boop. the mental body how many of us are conscious constantly and consciously controlling and guiding every single thought that we have or having no thought whatsoever probably not many of us right so our mental body has its own consciousness that it discerns, it evaluates, it has pros and cons, ups and downs, it criticizes, it discerns, it looks for solutions, it looks for problems, right? It's always working. It's always, um, it's always dealing with concepts and ideas, right? It has its own level of consciousness. So, if your soul extracted some of its energy and it had less control over your vehicles, their natural tendency would just start going crazy. So, why don't we go out and murder people in the streets? Why don't we go out and rape people in the streets? Why don't we go out and rob people in the streets? Right? Because that's the tendency of the physical body. The physical body wants to live. It wants to survive. It wants to experience pleasure. Right? So it will do that at any and all means possible. Does that mean it's the right thing to do? Absolutely not. Because there's a degree of soul control on the physical body. You're Christian, what about the people who go out and murder, who go out and rape, who go out and steal? There's a level, there's a lack of soul energy at that time with that person in that body. Does that make sense? So the soul has partially removed itself to a certain degree. So our connection to the higher self is minimal. So when your connection to your higher self is very expansive... You naturally have right thoughts, right speech, right feelings, and right actions, right? But when you're not connected, you make wrong, you have wrong thoughts, wrong speech, wrong feelings, and wrong actions. And all of those things lead to what? Suffering. So the question is, who is the boss? The higher soul or the chakras? Because the chakras, just like our physical body, our emotional body, and our mental body, have their own tendencies to do what they're going to do. So a great way of looking at it, it took me a long time to have this realization, 
a great way of looking at it is the higher soul is like the parent and the chakras are like the children. So in a dynamic of parent to child, who's the boss? The parent, right? Now, if the parent is constantly and never-endingly severe and strict with the, with the children, what is going to happen? The children are going to rebel. They're going to fight back. They're going to have a mutiny and overturn the ship. So that's why it's a balancing act of connecting to the soul as the soul, as you connect to your soul through different practices, the soul energy comes down and it, gra- and it grabs control over the lower vehicles and over the chakras. That is what is living a righteous life is about. That is what is walking the path of the Tao or the razor's edge is like. You become a holy person. Does that make sense? So just studying this one sutra, like any sutra, it can go very, very deep and you can have very profound insights. And I'll read it again. Character is the manifestation of the degree of soul contact. Stronger, the stronger your character the stronger your connection to your soul, the weaker your character, right? When you're out of balance, which is, you're saying, well, the balance of what? What? What's the balance of light, of love, and of power? Because those are the three qualities of the soul, light, love, and power. Those three qualities are then broken down into virtues, So one of the virtues that we work on and focus a lot on in pranic healing is the virtue of loving kindness and non-injury. That's the love aspect. Also, generosity and non-stealing, also connected to the love aspect. Does that make sense? So when you're out of balance, meaning you have maybe too much will, too much intelligence, but you don't have enough love in how you show up with your thoughts, your speech, and your actions with others, you're causing injury, right? Does that make sense? So you're out of balance. You have too much will, too much intelligence in relationship to the love. But let's say you have lots of love, tremendous amount of love. You are radiating, Alex, I'm a namaste, good to have you on. You're radiating love in all directions to all people but you lack will and you lack um, intelligence. So you don't make things happen and you're not intelligent about making things happen. So you're super loving, but people take advantage of you all the time and they walk all over you. So that is what it means by being out of balance. Light, love, and power have to be in balance with each other, which is connected to the virtue of moderation and non-excessiveness. The virtue of moderation and non-excessiveness harmonizes and integrates the other principles of light, love, and power and the other virtues. So that's why moderation and non-excessiveness requires constant awareness and constant adjustment all the time, not in a year or five years or 10 years, hey, I need to be more loving, it's a constant, never-ending adjustment. Hey, in this moment, am I being loving? Am I being light, love, and power? Am I embodying light, love, and power? No. Okay, I need to increase my intelligence. Okay, got it. I need to practice more discernment. Ah, in this moment, I need to practice more will, willpower, making things happen. Okay, got it. Ah, in that moment, I could have practiced more love, Right? So moderation, not excessiveness is the constant adjustment of the virtues. It's like a triangle, right? And you want all three sides of the triangle to be even because here's something fascinating. As the triangles become even, something else happens, right? The goal is to have, to go from where we are to balancing the three triangles, but then that energy changes. 
weak character reflects the weakness of the soul. So if you're not a very loving and kind person, it's a manifestation of a weakness and your connection to the love aspect within you. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you're... Um, it doesn't mean anything wrong with your essential nature because your essential nature is that of light, love, and power. But it means that that quality of love is not manifesting through you in your life. So you don't have loving thoughts, you don't have loving speech, you don't have loving actions. That being said, you have to practice that virtue more than other virtues, right? And how do, you, how do we know if we're loving and kind? Sean, I'm going to say, how do we know we're loving and kind? Because we get feedback in our lives from others, from our environment, and from ourselves. So if we're constantly attacking others with our thoughts, our words, and our actions, we're not embodying loving kindness and non-injury. If we're constantly attacking ourselves with our thoughts, our words, and our own actions, guess what? We're not practicing loving kindness and non-injury. Starting to make sense? When soul connection is not strong, the chakras rather than the soul control the lower bodies. Again, ask who is the boss, the soul, or the chakras? Who is the boss? So, perfect example. You know, I know, and the great teachers know that you going to the gym and working out is good for your physical body, good for your emotional body, good for your mental body, keeps you healthy and strong and allows you to live longer to do more goodwill and the will to do good. And you don't feel like going to the gym. In that moment of not feeling like going to the gym, you have a choice. Follow the will of the higher soul. Follow the will of the solar plexus, the, the emotional will of the solar plexus. Which one is going to win out? In that moment, who is going to be the boss? The higher soul that says, I don't care how you feel about going to the gym, solar plexus. We are going to the gym. All of us, all the chakras, we're all going together. It's a team effort, right? Or are you going to weaken your connection to your higher self let the solar plexus run the show, make the decision, and not go to the gym. And that's just one of thousands of decisions that we make every week, every month, every year, every lifetime. So with each decision, we're strengthening our connection to our higher self because we're doing the right thing. Or we're weakening our connection to our higher self because we're allowing the lower nature to choose for us. Super challenging. It's not easy. Nobody said becoming a saint was easy. Nobody said becoming uh, a holy master or a great, great being is easy. It's the most difficult thing we will ever do in any incarnation. As I'm becoming aware of. <laughs> so I hope that helps. I hope that inspires you. What questions, comments, clarifications do you guys have? Again, I was reading from Compassionate Objectivity by Grandmaster Cho Kok Sui. It's a teeny tiny book from the Golden Lotus Sutra book series. And this whole book is about character building. If you have character building as the foundation of your personal, professional, and spiritual life, you will go extremely far in your life. If you do not have character building as the foundation for your personal, professional, and spiritual life, you will suffer tremendously. Give you an example. Recently in the news, the famous producer, Harvey Weinstein, who was basically the figurehead of the Me Too movement of 
sexually abusing and taking advantage of actresses within Hollywood just got sentenced today. They're still in the process of wrapping things up, but the sentence is going to be anywhere from five to 25 years. I believe, he's, I believe his body is 65, 64, 65 now. So he's being sentenced to five to 25 years in prison because of what he did. Is Harvey Weinstein at the core of his essential nature, Jaron, I'm a namaste, a bad person? No. At the core of who and what he is, he's light, love, and power, just like all of us. But because of weakness of character and lack of character development, he, may, he had wrong thoughts, wrong speech, wrong actions that produced a tremendous amount of suffering for him and many, many other people. So that goes to lack of character de development. If you want to live a good life, become a good person. If you want to live a bad life, stay as a bad person, right? Does that make sense? So I hope that helps. Character building is a fascinating, not only a fascinating study, but a fascinating practice that you do for your entire life. One of the great, great founders, if you will, of our country, Benjamin Franklin, even wrote about it in the Poor Richard's Almanac, which was his autobiography. And he worked on 13 different virtues that you would cycle every year. Amazing, right? This is in the 1700s, and he came up with a spreadsheet. Caleb, Abba, namaste. He came up with a spreadsheet on how to develop the virtues in your own life because he, as a great, great soul, knew the importance of developing your character. Now, does that mean when you're developing your character, you're automatically going to be a holy person, you're going to be a saint and not make any mistakes? Of course not. I make mistakes all the time and I teach this stuff, right? Master Choa says, you don't have to be perfect, at least not in this lifetime, right? You do not have to be perfect, not in, at least not in this lifetime. So look, if you could be more loving, great, be more loving. If you could practice more discernment and intelligence and creativity in your life, practice that. If you could practice more willpower and making things happen and being constant with the good things in your life, then work on that. Right? It's a never ending process. You don't you don't arrive. You don't get, hey, I'm as loving as I'll ever be. I'm as compassionate as I'll ever be. I'm as humble as I, I'll ever be. It doesn't work like that. And the people who point to the path of being a better person don't have to be perfect themselves. Even Master Choa said, This is a great, great world teacher who impacted the lives of millions of people around the planet, even he said the teacher is not perfect. Hello, Master Choa, a super successful businessman, a super successful healer who produced miracles, who had trained thousands of healers to do millions of healings around the planet, Elizabeth, I'm going to say, even he said the teacher is not perfect. The teacher is still growing and evolving. So all the great, great teachers, all the great, great souls that are on this planet are still growing and evolving, right? But look at their lives, follow their instructions, and if, you, if your life improves by following their instructions, then that should give you a good indicator that maybe, just maybe, I should continue following their instructions. Which deals with discernment, right? Master Choa is very simple. In all the classes in Pranic Healing, he has a slide, right? That goes up on the, on the board. In every class, from basic to advanced classes, he says, use intelligent evaluation, practice discernment, experiment, and make your own conclusion. That's it. These are the tools that I validated to do this, this, and this. Here are the tools. Apply the tools. 
And if you get a similar result, continue to apply those tools. If you don't get a similar result, that's okay. Then this school isn't for you. This technique isn't for you. This practice isn't for you. Practice discernment. Discernment is the light quality. Remember we talked about the three qualities, light, love, and power of the soul. Light is discernment, is intelligence, is creativity. It's not taking things blindly just because a guru said it, just because a Buddha or a Christ said it. Truth is only truth. Keep this in mind. Truth is only truth when we can validate it for ourselves. Right? Because we make it our own. We embody it. Perfect example. The principle of tithing. If you give money, you get money. Super easy, right? Every major religion on the planet teaches it. As you give, you receive. That's it. That's a universal law. But the interesting thing is because we have free will, we can choose not to practice that universal law. I'm not going to give. I'm not going to tithe. Okay? So that truth, while universal, while affecting all of us on many, many different levels, because we have free will, we can choose not to follow it. So you have to practice tithing. And as you practice tithing, you start seeing more abundance in your life. As you practice more tithing, you see more abundance in your life. And guess what? Philip, Abba Namaste, you have now validated that as a truth for you. That's why truth is self-evident. Make sense? So Adriana says, it's a lifelong practice. Thank you for the reminder. Of course, that's why we're here. There is no, I was telling this to a client the other day, there is no shortcut. There are tools that will help you do the, help you do the work faster and more efficiently, but there's no shortcut to enlightenment. You got to put in the time, you got to put in the effort, you got to put in the energy. Then people would say, well, what about such and such spiritual teacher who obtained enlightenment or such and such saint that obtained enlightenment with putting in very little effort? Yeah, maybe in this lifetime. What about the 100,000 lifetimes of inner work and purification and suffering and learning lessons and trial and error? What about those 100,000 lifetimes or more that they did to get to that point of this lifetime achieving samadhi or enlightenment, right? Got to think about that. So I hope that helps. If I can assist you with your process of awakening, of getting just a little bit closer to enlightenment, please let me know. You can go to christianrlong.com. It's my name. It's my website. All the information is on there. I kind of make a joke that there's more information on that website about me than even my mother knows about me. And to a degree, that's actually accurate. It's true. Um... I left mom at a very young age, so that's partly why I'm saying that. So, yeah, if you need healing, go to ChristianRlong.com. We do the healing either face-to-face -face like this online. We do the healing distantly where we don't even see each other. I just text you, hey, I'm going to start your healing at 11 o'clock a.m. on Tuesday. Be receptive, and you'll start noticing changes in your life. Um, or if you're in the Denver area, you can come have a seat right here in my home office and get a healing face-to-face -face, which certain people like certain people are more comfortable with the physical interaction but the funny thing is about pranic healing is a no touch energy healing modality there's no touching as soon as you touch in pranic healing it's no longer pranic healing it becomes something else Pranic healing is no touch. So whether that distance is three feet or 3,000 miles, doesn't really matter. In fact, oddly enough, and this was talked about at one of the retreats a couple years ago,
people will typically get greater results distantly than they will face to face with a healer. There's there are exceptions, of course, but it's interesting to find out why that is. Isn't that amazing? You can get a better physical healing being a thousand miles away than if the person is three feet away. Physical, like a migraine or back pain or bloody nose or toothache or something like that. It's amazing, right? The wonderful world of energy that we live in. So thank you guys very, very much for sharing your time, your energy with the group. Again, I highly recommend this book by Master Choa, Compassionate Objectivity. It's amazing. And um, I've been reading this book on and off for over 14 years. Still have not mastered it. Not even close. Not even close. I'd love to be like, wow, yeah, I've mastered loving kindness and non-injury. Yep. Mastered it. Not even close. Haven't mastered one of the virtues. Gotten better, right? I've gotten more masterful of the virtues because I practice them. But master them? Not even close. (laughs) Not even close. Uh, Man. Going back to self-honesty and non-lying to oneself. (laughs) Becca, you're late for the party, girl. Hopefully you watch the replay and you get value out of it. Lots of love to you. Good to see you on, though. And that's it, guys. So I'm going to bid you farewell for this evening. Uh, I'm going to be at the airport probably around 6, 6.30 tomorrow morning. And maybe even do a stream from the airport because I, I like to get excited. I always get excited when I go to the airport. You know, you ever heard the old saying, like... Um, the 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 preparation to the vacation is better than the actual vacation. I try to get excited prepping it, flowing through it, being at it, leaving it, coming back. I try to be jacked up and excited the whole time. So love you guys very, very much. Let me know how I can serve you moving forward. This is Christian Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, wishing you a beautiful Monday, a beautiful week and a beautiful life. Atma. Namaste. Bye-bye.